Hi there, welcome to the Spirit of Wisdom and Revelation channel. And today, I wasn't sure what I was going to call this devotional teaching. I was either going to go towards building an ark or overcoming eagles. But I speak so much in this devotional teaching about Priscilla and Aquila, which is a type and shadow or are known as the overcoming eagles, that I, um, I, I rather chose to go that way. So today's devotional teaching is focusing a lot on Priscilla and Aquila or in the Smyrna church and just like all my other devotional teachings father has just been bringing dreams and numbers and things that happen in order to compile this this teaching and I don't know why he speaks to me in this way to other people he, he they teach in a different way but for me he is teaching through so many things, just like I discussed in my previous devotional teaching, um, When God Speaks. So this is just uh, another example of how he puts this together in order to bring a message to cross, across to you. So the important thing for me is that we ask ourselves, why is he emphasizing the Church of Smyrna? Why is he uh, uh, so focused on... Um, on uh, the first part of the tribulation, which is the Church of Ephesus and the Church of Smyrna. And the only answer to that is that we're very close. So, you know, this is all in preparation that we will understand what awaits us, that we will uh, deal with the things that we need to deal with, and that we will be focused, you know. So it's important. And the other thing I also want to uh, ask you to take into consideration is to think of the probability of these things happening to me in dreams or numbers or things happening around me what is the, what are the probability t's of bringing all of this together just to bring a message that's it's just unheard of how we can do these things so my uh, I often find myself, my mouth just hanging open up like, I can't believe it. I can't deny, <clears throat> sorry, I can't deny how he is uh, bringing this all together. So this is what's on his heart. And if anything, my prayer is that um, you will hear his heart today. Okay, that you will hear his heart. So how this all started was with my daughter that, uh, about two weeks ago my daughter uh, told me that she had a dream um, very short dream she said that we went on vacation and she can't understand it but um, on this vacation there were fire ants all over and there were also rattlesnakes so we went on a vacation where there were fire ants and rattlesnakes okay then on that uh, I think it was the next day my sister came to visit me and um, as we went for a walk um, right outside my house in the in the uh, road I saw a dead snake okay so there's the rattlesnake in my daughter's dream then I find a dead snake outside and then as well a friend of mine phoned me and her words are very specific she says Petra please pray for my husband he is now in a den of vipers and she was obviously being symbolic but I found these three mentioning of, of snakes. I found it so interesting. Okay, so the th first thing we need to understand about fire ants is that ants, we know, are workers. You know, the proverb says that we the, the sluggard needs to look at the ant, what a great worker he is. So um, ants is a reference, are a reference to, to workers. And these were fire ants. So they represent those being filled with the Holy Spirit. And we, the, the rattlesnake, again, they represent the, the brood of vipers that John the Baptist addressed. That would be the Pharisees. Okay. Now, what does a rattlesnake do? It rattles its, uh, uh, the back part of its tail, makes a noise to warn, okay, or to alert, or to also to frighten away. Okay. And they have venom. So... This is about going, the dream was about going to an island where there is fire ants and a snake. So when I heard this dream of my daughter, which she often thinks her dreams are insignificant and they're not, um, 
I immediately thought of Acts 27, where Paul was under arrest. He was on a ship, and there was a centurion watching over him. And they came to a, a time period where it where it was so dark they couldn't see the moon there was a storm and people were fearing their life and the evening before um, an angel appeared unto Paul and told him he mustn't worry there will be no loss of life in fact he needs to come before Caesar and so this is like a typical situation where we will see that even though we will be under arrest right then God will decide where we go and in, before whom he will bring us. So yes, Paul, there's a, 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 a storm. People are fearing for their lives. And Paul is as calm as a cucumber. He knows that he is going to stand before Caesar and there will be no loss of life. And so um, the people on the ship actually wanted to throw Paul into the water. And the centurion saved him and said, no, that's not going to happen over my dead body. And those who can swim better start swimming. But what they did is they, they threw the wheat into the water. Now for me, the ship itself represents the church. Okay? And the wheat represents the gospel that is thrown into the sea of humanity. That is the example for me. So they got shipwrecked and they got to the island of Malta. And the interesting part about the island of Malta or Melita, that it, the, it, the Strong's Concordance says it means honey. So it's almost like crossing the Jordan to go into Canaan. Now, in Canaan, you find milk and honey, but you also find giants. And so what happened is that Paul came to, uh, uh, to this island and there were barbarians. And they were willing to let them sit around a fire. Think of the fire ants. And um, the word says that, um, let's go to that scripture. That's in Acts 27. Sorry, that's in Acts 28. It says in verse 4, And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hung on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. <clears throat> so here comes here's this fire, they're all sitting around it, and all of a sudden a venomous beast comes and bites Paul on the hand. Okay? So think of the mark of the beast, you know, when we know it will be on the hand. Um, but you can also see this as a type and shadow being Acts 27, which is right at the end of Acts. You can also see it as a type and shadow of the the uh, 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 the the beast during the tribulation that will be Satan, that will be thrown into the bottomless pit. So it's a type and shadow of that as well, because Paul shook him off and threw him back into the fire. Okay, so you've got the beginning, the end, or the beginning and the end, the first and the last, as a type and shadow in Acts 27. Okay, so with this brood of vipers, um, it made me think of John the Baptist because John the Baptist addressed the uh, Pharisees as a brood of vipers. Okay, he often pointed to them and he judged them. And he, he asked them, you know, what, what do you have to do with me, you brood of vipers? You whitewashed tombs, right? Yeshua called them whitewashed tombs. So the interesting part about um, Elijah, right, is that uh, Herod's wife, required John the Baptist's head, okay? And John the Baptist, it is said that he was more or less, the studies have shown that he was more or less about 10 months in prison. So here we have John the Baptist and his head is about to be chopped off. Now, Yeshua said that John the Baptist is Elijah come. So John the Baptist is a type and shadow of the Elijah company that are pursued by the Jezebel spirit. You know, Herod's wife is a type and shadow of Jezebel. After the heads of the prophets, the eagles. Eagle is a connection to the prophetic. Okay, but also being sent out. So <clears throat> here we have John the Baptist addressing the brood of vipers that is as the Elijah company. Okay, now a type and shadow of them is Smyrna. 
Okay, in Romans 16, let's read. Priscilla, uh, 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 Paul greets once uh, 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 the people there to greet Priscilla and Aquila. He's now well acquainted with them. And he says here from verse 3 in Romans 16, he says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Verse 4, who have for my life, okay, Paul is a type and shadow of Christ, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. So just like John the Baptist hid or neck was on the line. In the same way, Priscilla and Aquila, the type and shadows of the eagles of the John the Baptist or the Elijah company, see all the connections, they lay their necks on the line for Christ. Okay, so if we go to Revelation 2, where it talks about the church of Smyrna, of which Priscilla and Aquila is a type and shadow, we read the following verse 8. Revelation 2 verse 8. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These thing, things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Remember I mentioned the beginning and the end of Acts 27, the first and the last. These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Okay, They will sow their own lives in the ground. They will sow their lives as a seed, John 12, and then they will be raised up at the last day to rule and reign. So they go out first, but they will be raised up last. But they will reign as kings and priests. That's in Luke 22. Okay, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation, okay, and poverty. Now think of the mark of the beast. I mentioned the snake. The snake bite on the hand. There will be great poverty for those who do not take the mark of the beast because they won't be trading. Okay, so Smyrna was an, a, a trading uh, city. It was opposite Ephesus and it was known for its trade. So here are the Christians and they are in poverty. Okay, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. And are not but are the synagogue of Satan. That would be the brood of vipers. Verse 10, he says to them, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Think of John the Baptist. That you may be tried and you shall have tribulation ten days. John the Baptist was about ten months. Here they will have ten days. Remember, everything will happen faster in the time to come. Be thou faithful unto death. It's making it clear. You will have to be faithful unto death. And I will thee give thee a crown of life. Verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Okay, so Priscilla and Aquila are those who lay their necks on the line. It's a time period of the Roman period where the, 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 the church was persecuted by, by Nero and those before him. Um, who, Nero was known for his Nero torches where the Christians were placed on a stake and lit on fire. Okay, they were also used as lamps basically on the, on the road. Um, so they were also known as the candlesticks of Christianity. Think of the seven churches in Revelation 7, where Yeshua walks between the candlesticks. Isn't that beautiful? And so John the Baptist, he was a light. John 1 says, talks about John the Baptist, who was a light, but he wasn't the light. And so the Christians, the Elijah company, the Smyrna group, they are the torches of Christ. They are the candlesticks of Christ. They burn with a fire. They are the fire ants. But they are also willing to lay their lives down. And by laying their lives down, they shine. That is their testimony. That they are willing to lay their lives down and put their necks on the line. Okay. So you can see the Smyrna, the John the Baptist. And the Elijah all being the same thing in scripture. Okay. 
So here yeah, Paul is and he's on his way to Rome. And then after the book of Romans, we read of, uh, we read of Corinth, which was also in Rome. And you just need to read Romans 1 to understand there's a description of the people in that time. Now, if you read that, you might as well read our newspapers or watch the news. It's everything that we are facing with now and even worse. It's got to do with backbiting, slandering, murderous, malicious, um, uh, hating parents, um, rebellious, a reprobate mind, horrible things. And this is the world in which the apostles uh, um, and those, those Smyrna, the Priscilla's and Aquilas, they will be sent into the world to these people. That's not going to be easy. Uh, it's really not going to be easy. But they are being sent into the world to the lost. Right? Paul was told that he was going to stand before Caesar. Okay? Caesar was most definitely lost. So he was going to go and stand before them. He was sent from different places to different places. And so the apostles will be sent to the world and to the church. So Paul speaks in Romans 2. He speaks to the Roman church and he tells them, uh, please don't be so quick to judge. You have to be sure that you yourself are not guilty of the things that you judge because uh, uh, the Lord God has reserved either eternal life or damnation for those who do not live holy lives. So sanctification is the issue. Sanctification and protecting the church from deception is the issue with regards to the church but with regards to the lost, it's salvation. It's throwing the wheat into the sea of humanity. And that is going to be the sole purpose of those being sent out, laying their lives down for Christ. Okay, so I want to tell you about a dream that I that a, a Simone, a friend of mine, had. And I'm going to call the dream the Ark. And the dream is about me giving a teaching, much like this one. And it's a type and shadow of what will be. And I will give the interpretation of it as well. So I'm going to read a bit. Okay. In this dream, Simone and her husband were watching a devotional teaching of mine on her cell phone. I was outside in my garden giving this teaching. She cannot remember what I was talking about. But the part she does remember is that I was talking about my daughter being caught in the trap of pornography. So I was in a very somber and saddened mood. I was talking about the church in general, using my daughter as an example, saying that as a mother, I should have broken this hold over her. Okay, so you can already see, yeah, it's about sanctification. Simone said that I gave great insight and wisdom regarding this and was teaching about this. Now, Simone's husband was a bit taken aback by the topic, thinking that it was very strange for me to talk about, uh, talk about this. And Simone uh, wanted to explain to him that this is not the normal topic that I talk about. She noticed in the background that there was a small pathway leading to uh, uh, what looked like a little a wooden house. Okay, She said it was about the size of a container, probably... 20 foot container, almost the size of a container and it was slightly elevated. There was a lot of trees surrounding it. It had a glass door. Okay, so behind me, she sees lots of trees and she sees a wooden house with a glass door. Now I finished my devotional, I started talking about this small wooden house behind me. And even though it does not look like much, I start talking about the fact that it has great value. I said, you know, it's insignificant. Okay. But if people only knew the value of it, they would understand how unique it is with all the time and effort it took to build it. Okay. It is much more of worth than what it looks like. On the inside, it is much more precious than what it is on the outside. Okay. So that's the first part of a dream. Now, this wooden house reminded Simone of Noah's Ark. Then the video finished, she says, and I say goodbye in the video. I finished my devotional teaching, and strangely enough, the camera did not stop filming. So it was now almost a behind-the-scenes video where Simone and her husband could see what I'm doing after the video. 
Um, the next moment, the glass door of the wooden small house opens up and out comes my daughter. And the first thing that Simone thought is, oh no, my daughter heard everything that I spoke about. So my daughter comes out and she's speaking through the uh, behind the, uh, 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 the door to f try and find me where I'm at. And uh, Simone was distressed about this, you know, scared that my daughter might have heard everything. And then I come come past the, the, the camera and up the steps leading to my daughter and I give my daughter a tight hug, taking a hand, going down the steps, walking towards the front of my garden. Okay, so Simone is noticing how this video is, you know, it's taking, recording everything that I'm doing now. That's no longer part, part of the devotional teaching. The camera now takes a video of us coming to the front garden and Simone thinks, who's making this video? How come this is like a reality show? And she thought this devotional is so different, being able to see what goes on in my life. Then she saw this woman and a man in my garden. So I'm still on my way to the front part of the garden, but the camera already focuses on these people in my garden. Okay, There were walls surrounding my garden and a gate, and these people just came in. Okay. The best way Simone can describe to how she felt about the word these two people is the word the weasels. They looked and felt like real weasels, very sneaky and up to something. They were looking to find something in the garden to steal it. And I had all different kinds of garden ornaments that they were after. They just took what they could. Simone saw how the man put something in his uh, pants pocket. As he does this, my daughter and I recognize these two weasels. I then address them very calmly and I told them to put down and get going. They did so and went away. Now all of a sudden, right in front of the camera, she sees a hand holding a weibel. And she realized then that this must be a delivery man okay, of some sort, a courier company. And the man wanted me to write down my address on the document um, and give my signature. However, I told him the packet is already here. Why do I need to write my address on the document? And I made a line uh, through that area. Um, and I told him, you know my address. You've just given me the, the packet. It's not necessary for me to write it down. My daughter and I then turned around and walked into our house. Now, Simone could see all of this happening from the outside. How um, how she and I, my daughter and I, went into the living room and we went to sit on the couch together. Then she saw, noticed these two weasels were sitting in their car outside and the man took out of his pocket what he took from our garden and what he took was a key holder with a trinket on and the trinket was like a, a piece of bread, like a tiny plastic piece of bread. That was the trinket on the key holder, okay? Mm -hmm. And he laughed and smirked and quite chuffed that they could steal that from me. And then when Simone told me about, she sent me a voice message. When she uh, gave me this voice message, she ended it up quite abruptly. And she said, I woke up at 2.50. Now that's the interesting part. Normally she would tell me what 2.50 means, but I will tell you now what that means. So I took note of the way she said it. But that was her dream. So here with the interpretation. This dream is about the apostles once again being sent to the churches and having to address issues that most people would rather not want to address, like pornography or um, adultery or fornication or um, idolatry, those kind of things. Okay. That which happens in the dark behind closed doors, of which the pornography says dark and shadow. I'm using my daughter as an example because she represents those who are still immature in the spirit and are still in bondage. Many children of the Lord are still in bondage, whether it is about sins they are still bound to, or dispositions, traditions, or past emotional baggage. Okay. These are still issues that will have to be dealt with as he prepares his bride, his children. These are issues of sanctification 
that will still be addressed during the Great Tribulation. Simone and her husband is a type and shadow of Priscilla and Aquila. They are listening to what I am teaching them, but not just listening, they are also watching my day-to-day -day life, how I am dealing with this. Okay, So it's a type and shadow of what they will have to face as well. What I'm teaching as well as what happens to those who will confront these very issues. This is the part where she's trying to figure out whether it was a reality show. It's not just important that we say what we say, but also what we do. We have to be authentic. Okay. It's also about reality and walking in the truth. I am teaching about this because during the tribulation, sanctification will still be relevant and walking in holiness to prepare the children to get ready to be taken up in the ark. Like my daughter, she comes out of the ark, the wooden house. Okay, The wooden small house does indeed represent the ark, hence why it was slightly elevated. Compared to day's vessels or passenger liners, a wooden ark is indeed insignificant. But the cargo is of great value. The cargo is souls. Precious children of God, the glass door talks about walking in transparency and in truth. Nothing hidden. Yeshua said, I am the way, that would be the door, the truth. That's the transparency, the glass door, no lies. And the life, the salvation, the ark is there to save, right? We will be building an ark, and the ark's name is church. This transparency and honesty leads to speaking the truth in love, and the fruit of it will be of intimacy and union between the children of God. Hence why my daughter and I hugged. So it's a restoration of relationships that will take place. They will know you are my disciples, Yeshua said, by when you love one another. Okay, so then... With regards to Simone saying that she woke up at 2.50. That that was on a, I think it was on a Saturday that she let me know of, of, or on a Friday, I'm not sure, of this dream. And then the Sunday, I uh, went on a shopping spree. My mother gave me a voucher for my birthday. And so I thought, okay, I will go and buy myself something. And during this uh, shopping spree, I had 50 rand left. Actually, it could be 54 rand for that matter. But I had 50 rand left and I knew I need to get some hand cream. Now, I usually, if I, there was a choice between olive hand cream and aloe vera. Now, usually I would automatically take olive because um, olives is a connection for me with Anna, the prophetess Anna who was from the tribe of Asher, and their emblem is an olive tree. And there's a lot of uh, prophetic significance with, uh, with Anna and, and my life. So normally, my first choice would be to take the, the olive hand cream. But for some reason, I was impressed to take aloe vera. So I took that cream, and it was 50 rand. Okay, so on my way back uh, um, from the shop towards home, I thought, that, why did I take aloe vera? There must be some significance to it. And then I remembered, oh, I actually looked up 250. And 250 means aloe. And then I remembered as well that my husband, just before we left to go on the shopping spree, asked me, why don't I use the cream, body cream, in the bathroom that's there? And I told him I do, only later on to realize that that body cream is aloe vera body cream. So there's hand cream that's aloe vera, it's 250 that means aloe, and the body cream that is aloe. So clearly Father was saying, I need you to focus on aloe, I want you to show you something about aloe. So this all holds hands. Okay, so Strong's 250 means aloe, <coughs> aloe. and let's just read what it says. The strongly aromatic, quick drying sap of a tree. Now, the sap of this tree, or this tree, is called Aquilaria, like Aquila. <laughs> I had to laugh when I read that. Aquila, right? Mixed with myrrh and used for embalming. What will happen with the Smyrna group, with the Priscilla's and Aquilas? They will die. They will be obedient unto death. So it's used for embalming. The true aloe plant. 
okay, and was used in ancient times for embalming fluid mixed with myrrh. And it is used in Song of Solomon 4 verse 14 as a spice of love. So it's a representation of the bride that lies, lays her life down for Christ. It says here, very important, remember that the name Aquila means eagle. It says here in Strong's 250, it probably refers to an aromatic substance derived from the eagle wood tree. Aquilaria agaloka. So that's the scientific name. So you see how Father, even in, in <laughs> how perfectly he puts everything together. That Aquila means eagle. That 250 means aloe, which is an embalming uh, 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 substance that comes from an eagle wood tree called Aquila area. That just blows my mind. Okay, so the name Aquila in the Strong's Concordance, if you look up for Priscilla and Aquila, Aquila means eagle. And um, this is a connection to the tribe of Dan. Now, the tribe of Dan is known as the, tri the tribal, uh, the tribe that judges. Okay, think of the queen of the south. Yeshua, uh, these disciples are asking what will be the signs uh, of the end times. And he says that the queen of the south will ri rise with the men of Nineveh. And the men of Nineveh, Nineveh is a representation of the Gentile bride. And it says that the queen of the south, that would be the bride, okay, she will rise up with her virgins, okay, um, and they will judge this generation. So there's this representation to Dan. Now in my queen of the south devotional teaching, um, I highly recommend you watch it for greater understanding. I speak there about I take everything out of Psalm 45, but I also reference Deborah. Now, Deborah was a judge. Okay, We read of her uh, in the book of Judges, right? And she is from the tribe of Dan as well. And Deborah sang a song, Simone reminded me of this this morning, uh, about the tribe of Dan that were on boats. The ox. Building the ox. They were ox builders, so to speak. Isn't that amazing, the connection? So, uh, uh, Simone also told me about her daughter that came to her, I think it was this weekend, that came to her and said to her, she woke up in the middle of the night and said, Mommy, I just want to stop dreaming. And she says to her, why do you want to stop dreaming? It's like, not a nice dream, is it a night? And she says, no, it's boring. She says, no, what are you dreaming? And she says, no, I'm dreaming about ships. Just ships. Then it's a little ship and then it goes bigger and bigger and bigger. Then there's another ship and the ship goes bigger and bigger and bigger. And they're all wooden ships, mommy. <laughs> so clearly the ark is on the menu, so to speak. Okay, so the emblem of the tribe of Dan is actually a snake. Remember we spoke about the viper. And and that's almost like the the the, the evil or the bad side of the tribe of Dan. But the, the other emblem also associated with it is eagles or an eagle. And that's the overcoming side of Dan. And we know that snakes, uh, uh, eagles eat snakes, right? So that's very interesting. So in Genesis 49, Jacob spoke a blessing over um, the tribe of Dan. Um, <coughs> sorry. This is what it says in Genesis 49 verse 17. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, and adder in the path that biteth the horse's heel, so that his rider shall fall backward. So interesting that I went with a walk with my sister and I found a snake in the path in the path. Right? And here the tribe of Dan is said to be a snake, an adder in the path. Okay. So Revelations 12. Talks about the old serpent. Let's go to that. Revelations 12 verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. So you see in the negative side. The serpent is also considered to be the dragon. Called the devil and Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Okay. Now Jewish scholars. I looked a bit this a bit up. Jewish scholars believe that the, the different... Uh, creatures associated with the tribe of Dan 
um, were the lion, the serpent, an eagle, and a dragon. Okay. So in Acts 27 that we read, we read about the beast that's being cast into the fire, which is a type and shadow of Satan that's being cast into the bottomless pit just before the thousand year reign. So we have, with the reference to the Jewish scholars about the tribe of Dan, they say that it's a lion, a serpent, and an eagle. Okay, so the lion, is, if you look at the, the, the good and the bad, Okay, the lion is Satan as a roaring lion, but then we have the lion of Judah, right? Then the eagle, we find that to be the false prophet versus the true prophets, the eagles of God. Okay, the Priscilla's and Aquilas. And then we have the dragon, which is Satan or the snake or the Satan versus God, right? So the lion, the eagle and the dragon are all uh, linked to the tribe of Dan and the time to come. Okay, so the dragon or serpent is Satan, the beast or lion is the Antichrist, and the eagle is the false prophet. I'm going to say that again. The dry, dragon or serpent is Satan, the beast or lion is the Antichrist, and the eagle is the false prophet. That's on the bad side of Dan. The good side is then the Priscilla's and Aquilla's. That overcomes. They are the overcomers. Revelation 16 verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So these, this is like what you would call the unholy trinity of the enemy. Okay, so the Elijah company or the John the Baptist company that points to the light has two very important functions. Okay, Elijah or the John the Baptist Company or the Church of Smyrna has two very important functions. Okay, to build the church and to confront the Pharisees, the vipers. So note how my daughter in this dream and I became very close. So we read of um, Elijah, what he will do in the time to come in Malachi 4. Okay, this is for us to understand. This is what God is working towards. Verse 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That has not happened yet. Okay. Verse 6, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So the Elijah company will have a focus of the family. Just like in Simone's dream, my focus is addressing issues in order that there may be love and restoration. Okay. Right at the beginning of the tribulation, families will fall apart. Remember Yeshua says, he has come to bring a sword, he's come to bring division, and he made it very clear that it will be in the households. So right at the beginning, families will fall apart because people were coming against each other for fear of their lives. Right, But at the end of the seals period, restoration will start to take place where the heart of the fathers and the children will once again turn to one another. Okay, Now addressing these two weasels, we, we represent the Pharisees in Simonai's dream that stole my God and ordinance. Is, I'm doing this in calmness, knowing my authority and chasing them away from my premises. The garden represents my life and taking a key holder with the trinket that is a slice of bread is to take ever, whatever they can find of what I said, right? Because I'm speaking, it's bread that I'm breaking open. So they steal whatever they can from what I say, okay? And to use it against me and to twist it just as they did with Yeshua. They used whatever he said, the Pharisees, to use it against him. They are seated in a car. Now, a car in this case represents ministry. These two weasels represent those whose, so, whose sole purpose is only to expose other ministries. The key representing that which keeps the car going. We need a key, right? Or their ministry. They are accusers and slanderers. Now, I'm not saying that we are not supposed to have people out there that warn. Uh, in fact, that's very important. But they're actually ministries. The sole purpose is just to expose. They've got no other purpose, 
They just expose. The, the only key to keep their ministry going is how to expose. Okay. We are more than just about exposing the works of the enemy. Um, in the same way, the Pharisees used whatever Yeshua said to come against him because of envy. Okay. The package delivery is simply Father's provision. Because she saw this hand um, and she thought it was a courier company. And Father already knows my address. I don't have to write it down. I don't have to worry. The packages will come, right? I only need to sign. And to sign means to be in agreement. In other words, in faith. I need to trust him. He will provide in the time to come. And then she sees how my daughter and I go and sit in the living room. Means our lives. A living room means the way you live your life. It's a living room. We go sit on the couch, which means we sit in our rest. We're resting. We're in his rest. And we're sitting together. There's been restoration. And then she sees these weasels on the outside, obviously showing the key, that they, the, the trinket that they stole. Okay. So this example that I've just given you is the example of how we will be sent to the churches um, like John the Baptist and confront the vipers, so to speak. And lay our lives down, okay, for the church, building up the church, looking after sanctification. Now, the next part will be about being sent into the world, a little bit about um, the church as well, but mostly about being sent into the world. Note, once again, the different animals used in these dreams. Now, the next two dreams are actually dreams of a close friend of mine called Chantel, we friends, Simone, Chantal and I were close friends. And she also had a dream. None of them knew what I, what Father was preparing me for uh, with this devotional teaching. He sent these dreams in order to, to minister to you. So she had two dreams in the same night and they hold hands. Okay. So the first one is about a lion attack. Chantal dreamed that she was in a house that she did not know at all. But it was her house. She had a pet lion. To her, it was like Nala, referring to a dog who grew up in her house. The lion was very big and was only one color, gold, including his mane. One color right through. Okay. She wanted to take the lion out and on her way out, the lion turned on her and wanted to bite her. The lion bit her on her left arm, his mouth so big that her whole arm could almost fit into it. However, she did not bleed at all. They were at the back metal door and she was desperately trying to push this lion out and to keep him out. And so she was struggling, then the doors closed, then the doors open, struggling. Eventually she could hook it up and that was the end of her dream. Okay, so the next dream, I'll call that scorpions. Ivan and Chantal were on a highway with double lanes on both sides and it had a bridge. She remembers it being the R-59 and it being on the south side of Johannesburg. They were walking on the left side of this highway towards Brucken Downs. And as they walked, they passed two traffic officers. Now before this, they saw a white van with no markings and dark windows. They also saw something suspicious with this van and it was after this that they noticed the traffic officers approaching. The officers asked them whether they saw the white van and whether they will be able to identify them. Whilst they are talking, the van comes from the opposite side, the other side, and they point to the white van, alerting the officers to go after them. The officers did so and stopped them. Six men exited the white van. Six is the number of men. Okay? Six men exited the white van, dressed in only black uniforms. Immediately, Chantal sensed that this was undercover scorpions, which would be the same as America's SWAT team here in South Africa, wearing black uniforms with 8K47. So what you call your SWAT team or wherever you're listening from, um, we have the scorpions also dressed in black. Okay, They saw Chantal and Ivan and knew that they pointed them out to the officers. Okay, They recognized them as those who saw them doing something illegal. Now Chantel cannot remember in the dream what this was, what she saw. 
<clears throat> the dream then shifts to them having moved into a new home. Just like a previous dream about the lion attacking her. She also didn't know that home. Chantal does not recognize the house. Everything was chaotic in the house. Everything all over the place. Chantal waited for her help, Dora, to come in. It was already nine o'clock. She kept on wondering where Dora is. Why is she not here yet? Everything in disarray with boxes standing all over and dishes needs to be washed. They also had a factory on the premises, but the factory was closed on this particular day. Her husband Ivan told her that they were closed and that they would not be trading as it was almost as if it was a Shabbat. Okay. However, they also knew that this white van will find them and will come to them on this day. The next moment, Ivan is outside meeting them. And whilst he's speaking to them, Chantal is in the kitchen, not wanting to partake in the confrontation. Whilst making herself some coffee, one of these scorpion guys come into the kitchen with his black uniform and his AK-47, wanting to use the restroom. She was nervous, not sure what to do, and scared that he would harm her. However, he was apologetic and humble in his approach to her. She was floored and very intimidated by this and confused, so much so to the point of not knowing where her restroom is. And she then did something she would normally not do, which is to tell him that he can use the restroom adjacent to her bedroom. She is very private and would not allow this with a stranger, let alone someone that appears to be dangerous. She was so grateful that he was not going to harm her. Then the scene of the dream changes again and the phone rings. It is on a loudspeaker and Ivan is speaking to the head of the scorpions. He then gave them a warning that they will be fine due to the fact that they owe Eskom money as well as Afri Forum and two other places or institutes. She remembers that these had to do with land. Okay, So the, the institutes had to do with land in South Africa. They are now duly warned according to this man. Chantal then felt that she needs to speak to him and say to him, Sir, I just want you to know that we are now five years no longer using ESCOM and have been using solar power. Now ESCOM is our uh, service provider for electricity and power in South Africa. So she's saying for five years we've not used them, we've used solar power. We do not owe ESCOM anything. We also do not belong to AfriForum or the other institutes. We made right with everybody and do not owe anyone. You have the wrong people. That is the end of a dream. Quite a long dream. Take some time to work through these things. Okay. So the interpretation of a dream. These two dreams of the lion and this one uh, on the same night are connected. Firstly, the name Ivan comes from the name John. I think John the Baptist. Then Chantal means stone as well as a songbird. Okay. Once again, they represent Priscilla and Aquila. Just like Simone and her husband represented Priscilla and Aquila. In the first dream, the lion speaks of those within the household that will come against those who are sold out to Christ, as well as the type and shadow of the Antichrist. Because the house itself represents the church, but it also represents her house. Okay? You will remember that in my previous devotional, The Spirit of Truth, I discuss how the Lord said that he came to bring division and that this division will be within the household where brother will come against sister and sister against brother and children will even bring their parents before the authorities. Those who were part of your household, the friendly pets or friends, dogs are a reference to man's best friend, will suddenly become devouring lions turning against you. Remember, Chantal considered this lion to be friendly like a dog, Nala, Nala, those whom you love. The fact that this lion is part of the household and that she's referring to it as her dog, Nala, made me think of The Lion King, the movie where Simba represents the king and Nala is his bride. So this lion represents those who are part of the household of God, the backslidden and lukewarm, who will turn on those sold out to Christ. At the same time, the lion also represents authority because the lion and the color gold represents authority and rulership or kingship. Those who are in authority, right? Usually a male lion's authority in the wild is determined by how big his mane is and also how dark, how black it is. That is for them 
intimidating uh, the other lions, male lions. So the bigger the mane, the better. Okay. It is by how they appear that they intimidate the other males. However, this lion is completely gold and represents those who abuse their authority to oppress the weak. So there's no black in his mane. Okay. Taking her next dream into consideration about the scorpions, where the lion is the, in the dream represents those in authority, so the scorpions or SWAT team represents those in authority as well, along with the other governmental institutes that were mentioned, that they owe money to. These represent the principalities and powers that will use those in governmental positions to come against the children of God during the tribulation to persecute them. In both dreams, Chantal is in great fear, fearing the lion and fearing the scorpions, those in authority. It is easy for us to speak against those who uh, we do not agree with. Quite another thing when you are brought before authorities that have the power to either cast you into prison or to kill you. Right? So I've said before um, that during the tribulation, a one constant battle will be the battle against fear. Okay. Fear against man, fear against uh, being falsely accused and intimidation and persecution. Chantal was bitten on her left arm by the lion and in the next dream uh, Chantal and Ivan were walking on the left side of the highway. Okay? In scripture the right side speaks of strength and reigning as Christ is at the right hand of the Father and also scripture says that he saves us by his right hand. Our right hand is also generally considered to be our strongest hand or arm. Okay? Her bitten on her left arm and then walking, walking on the left side of the highway speak of the opposite, which would be weakness. Weakness in this case points to two things, okay? The fear of man, but also to not depend on yourself or on man who is weak, okay? The back door points to Christ being our rear guard and how the enemy will want to come in um, through the rear into the church, Okay? And the little hook speaks that she could close the door with speaks about faith that is able to do great things through the smallest amount of faith. Okay, So the lion points to those in authority within the church as well as those who are out of line being predators whom the Priscilla and Aquilas must resist. The same way as those two people that came to steal in my garden and I resisted them and told them to leave. The enemy would want to find entrance through the back door as well. Okay. Psalm 91 verse 13 says, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Okay. So we have a lion, an adder or a snake and a dragon mentioned once again. In the second dream about the scorpions, Ivan and Chantel are a type and shadow of Priscilla and Aquila, right? And, but they are sent into the highways and byways. Note that they were on the south side towards Johannesburg. And the queen of the south, the queen standing next to, on the right hand of the king in Psalm 45, when you go into Strong's, that right hand also means south. So she rep represents the queen of the south, okay? The Priscilla and Aquilas. Okay, think the Queen of the South and her virgins rising up to judge this generation. They are sent up to judge. Okay, Luke 14 verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house, my house may be filled. Go to the, uh, the poor, go to the lame, go to the destitute, go to the hungry. Go to all and invite them in. And in Luke 14, he says that there will be those servants that will say to him, I've got an ox to deal with, I've got my family to feed, and I've got land to look after. So the ox would be the equivalent of materialistic things, your BMW or whatever, you know, the ox. Um, the land is uh, uh, your responsibilities. And the family is not willing to leave that all behind. And in Luke 14, Yeshua tells them, who's not willing to leave these things behind, are not worthy to be my disciples. 
not, not worthy to be my children, not worthy to be my disciples. They will not lay their lives down if they are not willing to leave those things behind. I cannot send them out if they are not willing to leave that behind. But I tell you, if they are not willing to go, then you go and you invite the poor, the lame, the, the, the broken and the destitute. Invite them, bring them into the barn, bring them into the ark, into the church. Bring them to my banquet, to my supper. Okay. Ivan and Chantel are literally on a highway which points to going into the cities. Johannesburg is considered the financial hub of South Africa. Okay. They are on the R59 and 59 means marketplaces. You will remember in my video called Apostolic Sending that Simone had a dream of me where I was in a Mediterranean city and it was in a city. Okay, So I was being sent into a city. And this is the equivalent of of Moses that was sent back into the world, into Egypt. Moses is a type and shadow of the first apostle sent into the world to say, let my people go. Okay. The letter R is the 18th letter of the alphabet. And G18 means Agathos, describing what originates from God and is empowered by him in their life through faith, to do intrinsically good. In other words, they are sent ones, apostles sent to the marketplaces, the highways and byways. They serve as a type and shadow of Priscilla and Aquila. In both dreams, Chantal finds herself in a new house. This once again points to being sent because the apostle will go from house to house Yeshua told his disciples, eat whatever they give you from house to house to minister to those of the household of God. They are aware that they do not know the house, yet they know it is their house. Together all the households from form one church or family. What they will find at these houses is chaos. Things must be set in order. Think of Romans 1. And what it will be like, the example of how the world is. That the church must not adopt these ways. Her house was in complete disarray. Now Chantel was waiting for Dora, her help. And Dora means gift. Okay, gift of God. And it was already nine o'clock. And nine o'clock or nine means divine fulfillment. Okay, so meaning that the time has come to clean up the church and that the chaos that it is in, to clean that up. For he will provide a Dora. Dora means gift of God. The point to ministering to one another with the gifts of the Spirit. And remember, Maya in my previous devotional had a dream where she saw toys hanging from the ceiling that represented gifts from parents, right? Toys. So it represented the gifts from the Father above and the place where it was in was a demented children's burnt down home representing the church who's not utilizing the gifts of the spirit <coughs> sorry so paul said to the romans that he desires earnestly to come to them that he may lay his hands on them so that they may possibly receive a gift from the spirit in order to establish them now that establish means to strengthen to uh, 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 to, uh, uh, to be as a pillar, to, to uh, encourage them, to establish them. Okay, so Paul is saying this is what the gifts of the Spirit is for. You need it in this time. Hence why Father wanted me to speak about dreams and visions in the previous devotional. Okay, so Paul is saying these gifts will be used in order to sort out the chaos within the church as well. Okay, so the, the, the Smyrna group, the, the Ephesus group, those, the Elijah company, they are there. They are builders. They build the church. They build the ark. Okay, Chantal is looking for Dora because the time has come to clean up. In the same way, he's saying to us, you need to earnestly seek the gifts of the Spirit for the time to, to come in order to help my church. The white van points to whitewashed tombs, which is what Yeshua called the Pharisees. Okay, They are white on the outside, but what is on the inside? Death. 
And what came out of these white vans or tombs was scorpions. Okay? Um, the traffic officers are those who are watchmen of the church, okay, who are warned about them, and the apostles will point them out saying, pay attention, you need to address this issue in the church. So the apostles will go to the different church leaders and say, this needs to be addressed, this needs to be addressed. The watchmen. Okay. Um, the scorpions represent the Pharisees of the household of God. Those who are, say they are Jews, but actually this is of the synagogue of Satan. Okay. Full of envy and bitterness. Scorpions sting. And Ezekiel, a type and shadow of the Son of Man, also addressed in the book of Ezekiel as the Son of Man, was told that he will find himself between briars and thorns, okay, and scorpions, okay. So what all of these have in common is the ability to sting and having venom as well. A briar or a thorn stings and sometimes there's poison on it. The same with a, 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 a scorpion. It's sting and it has venom. Okay. So the interesting part, knowing that Aquila means eagle, right? And that this is the overcoming part of the tribe of Dan that will overcome the snake, right? The mother eagle, um, when she builds a nest, she builds, builds it with briars and thorns. And then she puts her down feathers in there that it can soften it for the eagles, the eaglets. So the eagles will find themselves with briars and thorns, briars, between briars and thorns. The Elijah company. Okay, during this time. At Chantel and Ivan's house, they have a factory that is closed. She understands from Ivan that they are not to trade specifically, sensing that it's a Sabbath day. However, when we read about the church of Smyrna in Revelation 2, we read that though they are in poverty, they are actually rich. This points to the time frame of great poverty amidst a world that the mark of the beast will be enforced. Think of the sting of the snake or the scorpion bite that Paul had. And that those who do not agree, that is to say who will not trade, will find themselves in physical poverty. Their riches will be in Christ. That is to say they will be in his rest, knowing he will provide. Just like I perceive from the courier provision. Okay, they do not trade with this world. They are not part of this world. Hence why the factory was closed for trading. The scorpions are given, giving them a warning about how much they owe to the government, falsely accusing them. Chantal addresses this with great boldness and all this points to what Yeshua told his disciples to expect in the time to come. Luke 12, he says this in verse 58 and 59. When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him, lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very last might. Chantal told them that they have paid in full and owe nobody. She also says that they have not used ESCOM as electricity provider for five years, but solar. So the number five speaks of grace, okay, and also points, the number nine points to fulfillment, right, and at the age of the Gentiles we find ourselves in. So it's the fulfillment of the age of the Gentiles that the Smyrna group is sent out to bring in the harvest of the Gentiles. And the Jews as well, but the focus specifically is the Gentiles. Okay, the fulfillment of it. There will be, after it's finished, no more Gentiles will be coming in. Okay, this is what the seal spirit of the tribulation is for. Well, it's not that the, sorry, I just want to correct myself there. It's not that no more Gentiles will come in. It's that it's a, an allotted period has been assigned for the Gentiles. Okay. This is what the seal spirit of the tribulation is for. It is the fulfillment of the age of the Gentiles, whereas Jacob's trouble points to the Jews. Okay. Eskom, uh, the electricity provider, speaks of depending on man's power and submitting to earthly authority, whereas Solar speaks of depending on the sun and his authority. She is making it clear under whose authority she, authority she is trusting and speaking. 
The scorpion that comes into the house to use her restroom, being apologetic and humble, points to those who will be reached by the spirit, those whom we thought would persecute us. A type and shadow of that would be Saul, who was a Pharisee that persecuted Christians and later became Paul. And so many Sauls will be met on the way of persecuting Christians that will become Pauls. Okay. The way this will be done is by opening our heart, of which Chantal's bedroom is symbolic of, and testifying of our own personal sanctification, the restroom, to those who come against us. The AK-47 is an assault rifle, but they will not be able to resist it. No weapon formed against them will prosper, and every tongue that rises us against us we will condemn. And this is written in Isaiah 54. The focus is to not fear man, the left arm, but to know that when we are weak, he is strong. Okay, so approximately two years ago, I prayed for Ivan and Chantel for the time to come. And as I was praying, I had this impression upon my heart that they are like, uh, 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 that they, where they live, that they are like uh, building an ark. They are a Noah's ark. And that they will be used in building families. This is for, before Father revealed all these things to me. They will be building families, particularly uh, uh, couples, ministering to them. And when I told them about this, that Father was showing me this, they laughed because they said they, this is like an internal joke between them that, that they, uh, where they live is like Noah's Ark because of the amount of animals they have on their ground and the fact that they run a lodge where they keep rooms for people and minister to people and marriages. So that was just amazing. So they are literally a Noah's Ark, so to speak. So the scripture Father gave to me at that time for them is Genesis 6.14. And he says there, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it with in and without with pitch. They have a lodge with many rooms, specifically minister to married couples. So when I wrote this down, the Spirit impressed it upon my heart to look up G or Strong's 6.14. Okay. So, of Genesis 6.14. So, the Greek G6.14 means hidden away, treasured, or stored up. Now, think of Moses that was in the uh, woven basket, which is made of wood, on the sea, or a river, the sea, the Nile, um, the river, and his precious cargo, right? But think also of the dream that Simon I had with me with the ark behind. And I was saying the precious cargo inside the ark. So here we have G614 and it means hidden away, treasured and stored up. Okay. And then the Hebrew H614 means in gathering. Um, it means gathered, a gathering in of crops. A harvest. Okay. So the other day, <clears throat> I woke up with a song, very unlikely for me to woke, wake up with a song like that, just with the, 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 the main uh, 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 lyrics of the song, and it was knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. And immediately I thought of the ark, and I thought of when the ark's closed, and they're knocking on the door, wanting to go in, and they're not able to. And I thought, that's very interesting. Why would I wake up with this song? It's something I would listen to. And I looked up the meaning of the song and the lyrics of the song. So this is what the, the lyrics are. It's very short. I think, uh, what was this? Bob Dylan sang this song. And it's, Mama, take this badge off me. I can't use it anymore. It's getting dark, too dark to see. Think of the time we're going in. I feel I'm knocking on heaven's door. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Mama, put my guns in the ground. I can't shoot them anymore. That long black cloud is coming down. I feel I'm knocking on heaven's door. Think of clouds, darkness, rain, tribulation, destruction. That's dark clouds. But what this is actually about is this sheriff or deputy that was hunting down Billy the Kid. And he was that long last coming to the point where he's giving up. He's no longer going to hunt him down. So when I woke up with this particular song, it was exactly 4.45 
And when I looked up the meaning of 445, it means proconsul or deputy. So what's the chances of me waking up with a song that I will never sing and it's about a deputy or a sheriff that decides he's putting his guns down? Okay, so question was, what was Father showing me? And he took me back to the fact that there was a centurion that wanted to save Paul on the ship. It took me back to the fact that there was Caesar that Paul would be brought for, uh, uh, in front of to minister to, to speak to, to be a witness to. And the fact that there was a centurion that, or a prison guard that uh, 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 was guarding Paul and Silas' uh, prison when the prison doors opened because they sang and they were saved, him and his whole family, the centurion. Then the fact that there was a soldier at Yeshua's arrest whose ear got healed and probably got saved because of that. So you find all these centurions or deputies, so to speak. Now this uh, 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 centurion, uh, G445, or the deputy, is only used once in Scripture, and that's in Acts 18, okay, where it talks about a Gal Galileo was the deputy, Okay, and Paul was brought before him and the Jews were saying that Paul needed to come before the judgment seat. And Galileo said, listen, I find nothing wrong with this guy. You are on, on the wrong. Okay, and it also in verse 8 talks about Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. So Paul actually wanted to leave Athens. The Mediterranean, okay? Remember Simone's dream about me being the Mediterranean and then going to Rome. And he is talk he was with Priscilla and Aquila for one year and six months and during this time. Because the Lord told him he's got many believers in Corinth. And one of them were Christmas. So the Lord has purposed that there will be certain people in authority that he will send us to that we will minister to because he wishes to save them as well. Okay, the scorpion, so to speak. Okay, and I found it interesting that the, the centurion, I did some research on the name Gallio, and there was a centurion called Gallio, and he was the one who received the or took the seamless garment of Yeshua that he had on the cross. He took that seamless garment that were not torn, okay, that was not torn, and he became saved. He was converted. And it's believed that he is that centurion that was on the ship with Paul. That's just amazing. Our Father will bring all of this together. And in the same way, this scorpion comes into Chantal's house and he wants to use the restroom. And it, it talks about entering into the house of God. Okay. So after I've done this, putting all of this together, I, I, my you know, I, I'm amazed at how he brings all these things together, all the dreams, the numbers and things happening. And, and I go, gee, that's great. But I ended up with these words. So what? So what? What, what are you supposed to do with this information? We, uh, are you just going to go, oh, well, Peter, that's very, that's amazing. You know, how all these things fit together. We can see how, how the Lord has instigated all of this. But how does this touch you? What, what are you supposed to do with this information apart from just gaining more knowledge? If, if this is what comes out of this conversation, it's just more knowledge than I have failed. And I struggled with that immensely after I put all of this together. Um, and it was on the Sunday. Was it? I think it was the Sunday, Mother's Day. Um, I, I struggled with it and I said to the Lord, Lord, you know, there must be more than this. This information itself will not cause us to endure. It will help us give understanding, but it will not cause us to endure what is to come. Because even as we hear this, it's the, the propensity to go into cognitive dissonance is so great because what is to come is too big for us to even cons to, to think about. Um, the type of persecution. How are we going to endure? Not with information. And I was, I was really thinking about this. I was really 
uh, 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 saddened by it and and what uh, as I was thinking about it I, I was sitting on my couch and I, I, I started thinking of of uh, that there must be a vision that that will help us to endure that will cause us to pursue um, and and stay the course right to the end to the point even of laying our lives down what will cause us and i said to him lord your word says without a vision the people perish what is the vision and i was i was thinking of my husband for for some reason after my daughter's now 18 years old for some reason for the first time in a long time he was adamant he wants to uh, uh, celebrate mother's day and i was like why <laughs> He just wants to celebrate and he was thinking of breakfast and everything that he wants to do. And I was like dumbfounded by this. And then I remembered, you know, Father uses him a lot as a type and shadow of Christ, my husband, speaking to me. And he's saying, I want to celebrate Mother's Day. And out of that came so many references to Mother's Day that he brought upon my path. Now, many years ago, I came to him. And to the Lord God and I, I spent some time fasting and I remember going on my knees and crying desperately for children in the spirit I said to him I am your wife but I don't have any children to present to you and you know Rachel came to Jacob and Rachel didn't have any children at that time and I read up a bit about that and it said that the way Rachel spoke to Jacob about wanting children, she said to him, give me children or I die. That made me think of praying Hyde, who cried, uh, it's a great intercessor, who cried, give me souls or I die. Hannah, that came um, into the temple and cried for children. She wanted a child. That this is a, a type and shadow of the bride that wants to bear children for her husband. Um, in the same way, we find Isaiah 54. Now, the numerical value or number that is associated with the tribe of Dan is number 54. And Isaiah 54 starts with that sh the bride, because Isaiah 54 is about the bride, how she needs to broad, she needs to rejoice and sing. Remember, Chantal means songbird. She needs to rejoice, O barren woman. For more will be your children than you, she who had a husband. Your children will be more. That she needs to broaden her tent pens. She needs to broaden the space. Her tent needs to become bigger. Now, Priscilla and Aquila were tent makers, and so was Paul. They were ark builders. Make your tent pens wider for the amount of children that I will bring in. So we are being sent out to go and reap and bring forth a harvest of children. Okay. And he says to her that he will protect her, that no weapon formed against her will prosper. And so at that time when I was praying for spiritual children, the Lord God, uh, 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 brought a, uh, a plant on my way that I planted and when I asked what the plant was called it was called a mother of thousands now the significance of the mother of thousands is that I was bold enough to say to him I don't want a few children I want thousands of children that was said by the spirit the spirit was birthing this desire in me for spiritual children right so here i am i asking him for children and i'm asking for thousands in the spirit and he brings a plant to me called mother of thousands now that was a while ago so what happened in this weekend during this mother's day that needs to be celebrated i received a dream where i got out of a car and a man standing next to me and i believe it's Joshua, and I am highly pregnant. And he says to me, it's time you tell them you're pregnant. Meaning it's time to travail. So what happens is my mother of thousands became so big in its pot 
that it fell over twice and had to plant it over, meaning the tent pens had to become bigger because the thousands will come in. And I'm sitting on my couch thinking of travail, that when a woman goes and she is pregnant, when we think of the rapture, right, or the escape, we think that or that, that is a birth. But what we need to understand, before any birth, a ship births at a harbor, before an ark births before a harbor, before that happens, she's at sea, she is in the storm, she needs to travail and give birth. And while I'm thinking this on my couch, Simone sends me voice message saying, she dreamed of me, that I was sitting on my couch crying. And I'm watching a program in South Africa called Seven de Lawn. I won't watch that. And Seven de Lawn means Seventh Avenue. Seven means rest. I'm sitting on this couch and I'm crying and she cannot console me. Think of travail. And in this program I'm watching, there's a lady called Paula and her tummy is open. And I'm saying to Simone, I hope you don't mind, but my daughter, think of the virgin daughters, also wants a flat tummy like yours. Now, why is the tummy flat? Because I am resting. The ark has come to rest. And the tummies of the virgins are flat. They have given birth. So Noah's ark rested on Mount Ararat, which is a type and shadow of Mount Zion, after it has come through the storm. And within that ark are animals representing the children that the bride, the Noah bride, brings forth. And unless that is our vision, the children, that we are fulfilling the Abrahamic covenant that the Lord God had with Abram, saying, your children will be as the stars. Who are the children, the sons and daughters of Abram? Those who walk by faith. They are the ones sent out into the world to fulfill the promise of the covenant made unto Abram, that his children will be as the stars. What gets me going, what will get you going, is to have the same vision as God. To bring many sons and daughters into the ark. I cannot think of a greater privilege than to stand before Yeshua and have thousands behind me to say, Here are your children that I bore for you. Here are your children. There is your inheritance. You, the corn of wheat that fell to the ground, that I could harvest in the time to come. Unless that vision is alive in you, you will not make it. Unless his vision, his dream is your dream, you will not make it. We have to ask and cry out to him and say, let your vision for many sons and daughters us as a bride be able to bring forth to you. You know, a man, the bride consists of a man, of men and women. Men bring forth out of their loins and women bring forth out of their womb. Both understand the value and treasure the value of children. Now, at this present time, the value of life has diminished. It's so easy to abort a child. It's so easy to kill and murder. But he values life. Life so much so that he gave his own life. May we hear what his heart is. We are not sent out to display power. We are sent out to bring in sons and daughters. Bless you.